In this video, we're going to take a look at ChemStat. This is a Windows desktop application for the statistical analysis of environmental monitoring data. From the file menu, I'm going to select new project and ChemStat text file. This is going to allow me to import my data from a text file that is in a specific format. If you need to generate this file, there are two ways that you can do that. The first is you can use our environmental data management product, ChemPoint, and it can export your data to this format. The second is that ChemStat includes a data conversion utility called the Universal Converter, which allows you to convert data in like DBase or Excel or other formats into this particular format. In general, you should never have to edit this format yourself or create it manually, just like in a uh, text editor. Here I have my file that I'm going to import. I click next and I have a few options. I can limit the dates and I have these other options, which may be useful for your particular situation. Now I am importing the data. ChemStat has the ability to do a completely automated statistical analysis of the data. However, in general, you will want to look at your specific situation and pick statistical methods that apply to your situation rather than doing a fully automated analysis. But that option is there and it is discussed in more detail in another video. So let's take a look at the ChemStat workspace. From this drop down list, I can choose chemical parameters that I want to analyze. You'll see as I choose a different parameter, this report, which is really just a summary of all the concentrations, gets updated. In some of the statistical methods, you will want to choose a specific monitoring well, and you can do that from this drop down list. In this panel, we have the method selector tree. This allows you to choose statistical methods organized in a hierarchy. For example, if you want to test for outliers, you can look under the outliers tests and see which options are available. You just double click on one of the options to see the results for that test. Again, I can go and I can change the parameters and I have other options specific to this test available here. Notice that my reports are organized by tabs. In this pane, I have the workbook pane. This has the workbook tab, which I will explain in a second, a summary, an advisor, which gives you information about the specific test that you're looking at, and a scripts tab, which allows you to create scripts to automate statistical analysis. That is discussed in another video. On this lower toolbar, we have the transform button. This allows us to transform our data using one of these methods and to choose how we want to represent our non-detects. On the file menu, we have all of our file options. The distribution menu shows statistical methods that you use to determine the distribution of your data. They don't actually determine statistical significance, but just whether you have normally distributed data or not normally distributed data. There are also some outlier tests and some trend tests, such as the Mann-Kendall trend analysis. The analysis menu is where you typically find all of your statistical methods that you use to determine statistical significance. The graph menu is where you have all of your graphs. For many graphs and reports, you're going to have options available in these drop down lists specific to that particular graph or report. The workbook menu has all of the commands you need to work with the workbook. The scripts menu has all of the commands you need to work with scripts. The select menu is sort of a catch-all menu with many other options. Most of these are available in the right-click menu that you access over each report or graph. 
the workbook is one of the most important features in ChemStat. Let's go to the workbook. And on any graph or report, we can right click and select add to workbook. That puts it in the workbook. And once it's in the workbook, it will not be modified. I can add another one to the workbook as well. Note the little icons. The green icon means there is no statistical significance. The blue icon means that the test does not calculate statistical significance. This is an outlier test, so it does not calculate statistical significance. A red icon indicates that statistical significance was detected. So note that I have added the Man Kendall trend analysis. And if I double click on it, I will see the analysis that I put in. And I can scroll to the bottom and see that there was no evidence of a trend. At the time I added that to the workbook, it also added an entry in the summary tab. This is a tab that summarizes the analysis results for your workbook. If I want to extract all of these results, I can go to the workbook menu and select write summary file and that will write a text file that has all of the results in my summary tab. Back to the workbook menu, I have some options with the workbook. I can print the workbook or I can print selected items. I can also export the workbook as rich text, tab delimited text, or I can export it to Microsoft Word. Let's go back to my probability plot. On some graphs, you will have a separate tab that shows you calculations that are used to create the graph. This might be helpful if you would like to verify the data in the graph or just see the data used to create the graph. Scripts are a way of doing an automated statistical analysis. You don't actually write a script. It's all point and click. I'm going to create a new script and I'm just going to accept the default name. Here are the parameters that I can include in the script. They're all of my parameters. And I add them to the script. Next, I have a command. I select whatever command I want in the script. I'm just going to generate a basic statistics report for my zinc. Now I can run the script and the reports that were generated are added to the workbook automatically. You see I have two basic statistics reports, Zinc and Zinc to Solved. Those are the parameters I had selected. I can save my project from the file menu. And this saves all of my workbook items along with all of the data. Another important thing to consider about the workbook is that if I do something like transform my data, I'll switch to log transformation, the workbook data stays the same. So you can see here, any item I open from the workbook, it's still the original data. It's not transformed. This again was a workbook report. And this was a workbook report. But these were non-workbook reports. So they have switched to log transformation. Any report that is open at the time you do a transformation will be updated with whatever the new transformation is. So now all the open reports are square root transformations, but everything in the workbook is still how it was when it was added to the workbook. So once a graph or report is added to the workbook, it does not change. Another item that you may need to know about is from the options menu, change well gradients. 
The statistical methods typically perform compliance to background comparisons or else they perform intra-well comparisons, just a well compared with its own historical data. So all of your wells or sampling locations are either compliance locations, background locations, or they are not used. And this dialog allows you to set the location of the well. So compliance locations are down gradient, background locations are up gradient, and unused wells are completely ignored in the statistical analysis. That is the quick overview of ChemStat. Look for other videos for more detail on specific topics.